okay so we've been looking at adding uh, algebraic uh, terms or uh, doing algebraic addition and the next topic here is combining like terms now we've just learned what it means for terms for for things to be alike we've not looked at what terms are yet we'll look at that just now but things are uh, can only be added if they are like they are the same type of things like if I have seven X's I can add to it two X's I can subtract from it five X's if I want to but if I want to add any Y's to it okay I won't be able to do it because it's different now this seven plus two would give me a nine minus five would leave me with four X's but there's nothing I can do to add the Y's together this is not four five nine x y's this is not that it's four x's and a plus means and they are four x's and five y's that's what we can do with this expression now what we're going to look at is the word terms what does a term mean well a term is an algebraic expression okay so what is a term a term is a mathematical mathematical expression okay, that is being added that is being added or subtracted or subtracted okay Ooh, running out of space okay and messing up my screen okay there we go it's it's an expression that's being added or subtracted so you'll notice here in this expression we've got one two three four terms okay and of those terms only three of them were alike terms in other words like terms are terms that can be added because they have the same variable okay they have the same variables. This is seven X's and those are two X's and this is five X's. So they can be added because it's the same thing. This one is unlike because it's got a Y value in it. Okay. So to simplify, okay, there's the process of simplifying means to reduce the number of terms. Simpli oh, not fully. <laughs> Simplify. Okay. Simplify literally means reduce the number of terms there used to be four terms now we've gotten it to a point where we only have two terms left now there's more to simplify than that but that's one way of simplifying is reducing the number of terms okay um, now just something that will help us along the way and that is called the commutative okay the commutative commutative property of addition okay now now it seems technical isn't it uh, property of addition okay the commutative property of addition commutative in this sense simply means the swap around ability okay this swap around ability of addition so for example a very simple example we've been looking at adding 2 plus 3 and we get the answer of 5 swap around ability means if I had 3 plus 2 okay I still get 5 and we know this it's like well of course 2 and 3 is 5 and 3 and 2 is 5 that's simple that, that it's obvious true it's not really as obvious um, as you might think and a simple example will explain what if I had 3 minus 2 okay so addition has this property where I can uh, swap things around and I'll still have the same answer but for uh, subtraction it's not the case when I have 3 minus 2 I get 1 but if I have 2 minus 3 now I'm subtracting a number when I only have 2 which means in the end I'm going to own sorry I'm subtracting 3 and I only have 2 which means in the end I'm going to have to owe 1 if I have more and I subtract less I own if I have less 
and I subtract more, I owe. Okay, so here I own three, own one, and there I owe one. I like to think of s um, negative numbers as owing. Okay, so the commutative property, just a little bit more technically, would be that if I'm adding any two things, I can just swap them around and I'll get the same answer. In other words, A plus B is the same as B, B plus A, where A and B can be anything, okay? So anything added together and uh, is the same as adding it in a different order. However, if I have A minus B, notice if I take B minus A, I get the same answer. In effect, I get one, but now the signs are different, okay? So whatever outcome this one has, okay, it would have a different sign. So just to indicate that something has a different sign, I'll put it in brackets and give it a negative in front. That will show it has a different sign. Okay, but more about this a little bit later on. What is important here for the commutative property is that I can swap terms around. So if I wanted to swap things around when I'm subtracting, I'll have to keep the negative with the two. And remember that the 3 is positive. So instead, I could say negative 2 plus 3, and my answer will still be 1. Okay. In other words, I owe 2, I own 3, which means if from the 3 that I own, I must pay the uh, 2 that I own. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. The 3 I own. I must pay the two I owe, and I'll have, I'll own one. In other words, it's one positive, one left. Okay, so notice how we get the same answer than there. So, in effect, addition, this is addition, the commutative property of addition. I'm just adding a negative number. That's, that's what's happening here. Okay, so the, the advantage of the commutative property is that it makes it possible to combine like terms. So if I have a, a confusing expression like I have seven x's, I've got three y's, I'm subtracting two z's, but I'm also adding five y's again, but then I subtract an x, Okay, when there's nothing in front, I haven't mentioned this yet, but when there's no number in front, it means there's a one, there's one x there. So I'm subtracting an x, then I'm subtracting also another two z's, and then I'm adding four. Okay, now to combine like terms means that I can swap these things around in any order that I want to, because we saw as long as we keep the sign with the term, so the negative belongs to the 2, so I must just swap it around so that the negative stays with the 2. As long as I do that, I'll get the same answer, I, um, and that's the commutative property. So let's see. Let's first write all of our x's down. So we have 7x, uh, another x, oh yes, there we're subtracting an x, then we have, let's do the y's, plus 3y, okay, there we're adding another y plus five y's, okay. And then let's see the z's. Okay, so here we have two z's that's subtracted. This is important. We must keep that negative two z, okay. And um, there's another negative two z, negative two z, okay. And then I see, okay, that's all the z's. And then I see there's one term, one expression. It's being added, so it's a term that does not have anything. It's just four. It's the number four. Now the number four is different to all of these, so we will write him all on his own. And he cannot add with anyone because he doesn't have a variable. He is what we call the constant term. The four will be four and will always be four unless we add another constant to it. So what do we have? Now notice how many terms we have. Remember terms are the expressions that we are adding or subtracting together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. We want to simplify, which means we want to reduce it to the uh, lowest number of terms. Here we have seven x's and we owe one x, so we have six x's left. Here we have, we own three y's 
and then we own another 5y's so we owe, own a total of 8y's okay the z's I owe 2 z's and then I owe another 2 z's which means in the end I owe 4 z's okay so negative 2 negative 2 gives me negative 4 z's and then I, s I just have a, a positive 4 left and as you can see none of these are like terms but these that all were in the same color were all like terms okay and this is what we mean by combining like terms we just swap everything around so that they are alike now we'll get to more complicated expressions a little bit later okay where we have things like x y z so we have got eight x y z's okay plus two z y x's and later on you'll learn that these are exactly they are like terms it doesn't matter the order in which they appear in one term but let's look at that later stop this video here and give you some chance to practice good luck